Hello, and welcome back to the Artsmoose tutorial showing you how to make a WebSocket server from scratch using Node.js with no external dependencies. So the last tutorial, we left off with how to do the initial handshake for initiating the WebSocket connection, which is done here. In this next tutorial, I will attempt with Hashem's help to show you how to send messages from the server to the client which, in my humble opinion, is inconceivably simpler than reading messages that the client sends through the WebSocket protocol to the server. Anyway, basically, we have to listen. We have this socket object, which is passed on every request that has an upgrade header, which is essentially the one request where the WebSocket initially connects. And then afterwards, this socket is kept open, unlike usual HTTP connections, where the connection is instantly closed when you... For example, if you connect to the regular server, we have, our, we have our server running here. If you connect to the server using HTTP, you'll see that it's, it gives you one thing, but it ends immediately. Localhost 8081. This is our current server and HTTP, which only gives us this, this text, and then the connection between the server and the client ends immediately. That's what's done here. But in the WebSockets, this connection of the socket is kept open. So we need to listen so we can send data back and forth. So in order to send the data, so what we're going to do is when we open the socket, we're just going like to send a basic message from the server saying like hi or something. So let's make a, a function that, okay, so in order to send te let's text, for example, or binary data, it has to be encoded in a very specific way, which we'll talk about hopefully in a second, two seconds. So to do that, let's make a new function which will encode our data into a specific format, encode, dea, dos. So this takes like a string, for example. Okay, we'll get there, we'll get there in a second. And we'll, and then let's, when we want to write new data, for example, we do sockets.write, and then we have to write the encoded data. In fact, let's make it as a separate variable so we can check for it. var encoded equals encode dea, and then let's do like an initial message like shalom, which this tells them, this is sent to them right when the second connects just to test it. So then it encodes the data here. And then we send that. I guess we could check if it exists or not. Whatever. We should, we should maybe check if it exists because maybe sometimes it might not exist. And then we write it. Okay, now let's actually get to the meat and bones of what actually is the encoding. So it might seem a little complicated at first, and it was for me personally. But once you get the hang of it, it's not so complicated. So this is the documentation, RFC 6455, section number 5.2, which talks about how to encode the WebSocket in a specific format that's needed. So this might look a little bit complicated, but it's essentially just a collection of numbers. So just a very brief summary of what binary is, for those who don't know. You can skip this for like a 30 seconds or so, or a minute maybe. Essentially, when you count to 10 in base 10 you count 0 through 9 and then when you get to 10 you start over from the beginning you go back to 0 with the one in the beginning but in binary you count up to 2 and then you start over for example 0 is 0 1 is 1 and when you get to 2 it's 1 0 and that's 2 and then 3 is 1 1 and then when you start over again 1 1 0 0 is 4 so everything in computers is essentially made up of these ones and zeros which are called bits and 8 bits make a byte and it, all text that's sent has a number of values, which is essentially the bytes and the bits of that number. So, for example, in this case, up to seven, this is one byte. Each one of these things here represents one, is either a zero value, which is either a zero or a one. And multiple numbers together can make up a full actual number, like, for example, between zero to 16, or depending on how many bits, depending on, depending on how many bits there are, that's how big the number can be. If there's one bit, the number is either 0 or 1. If there's two bits, the number could be 0, 1, or 2, or 3, etc. So the number of bits determines the length of the number. Now, let's get to this. This is what we need to write to our client from the server side. We need to construct this. Ooh, okay. I only have a few minutes. Maybe we'll just do a little bit, and then hopefully we'll continue another video. So we need to construct this in Node.js in order to send this to the client. And then the client on the client side reads all of this automatically 
And the reading is a lot harder than the writing, in my opinion. So let's just talk about this. In this tutorial, let's just talk about it. Maybe we'll do the decoding in the next tutorial if I charge this. Anyway, so essentially this is all one big number. Everything in the computer is a number. But the number is divided into sections of eights, which divided, meaning it's divided into bytes. Each byte has eight bits. So this is all divided into sections of eight bits at a time. And each bit represents a different value, which has a certain code. Anyway, the point is, let's go through with them one by one. It says down here, the first one of these bits that's in this big number is called thin, which stands for if it's finished or not, because it's possible to send a single message over multiple parts. And if one, so it, that's so the the progress the, the the process of sending a message over multiple parts is very complicated. It's called fragmentation because it makes different fragments. But the point is, if you're only sending one message, that message is the first and the last. So. This fin is a zero or one at the beginning, which determines if it's the last message sent or if there's more to go. If it's a zero, if it's equal to zero, this zero means like the index of zero. But if, if this is equal to zero, that means that there's more messages to follow. If it's equal to one, that means that it's the final message, which also Kabbalistically is it's interesting because the creator is the first and the last and the creator is one. It starts at the beginning of the Zohar. It says you are one, but not in the numerical sense. And the first thing of the binary is whether it's the finished, the last or not. Anyway, so that's, so fin is the first zero or one, which represents if it's finished or not. Then afterwards, these three bits, these three values of either zero or one are all zero because the guys who invented the WebSocket thing decided to leave three of these things available. They said for some future time, they might use them for something at the future time, which also Kabbalistically is interesting because in the future time, the, Jew well, the Jewish people originally conquered the land of Canaan with the seven nations, but there's still three nations which are destined to be inherited in the time of the future. Anyway, so <laughs> that's interestingly that there's three values here that the guys who made the WebSockets decided to leave empty. So the point is, the binary, when we write it from the server, we're only going to do one message. So since we do one message, it's the message we said is the final message of the section. If we're doing multiple fragments, then it would be zero, and then the final one would be one. But if we're only sending one message, which is a lot simpler, then the first bit that we're going to write is going to be one. And then the next three are going to be zero, because, for example, for some reason, they're always made zero. So if a non-zero value is received, and it, unless it says otherwise, then it automatically fails, unless it's specified not to. Okay, then anyways, so the bits, the so three is really the fourth bit. So the bit from, from four to the fifth bit to the end of the byte, so these last, the last four bits are a, co are a number from between 0 and 16, representing a code of what type of data it is. Because when the server sends data to the client, there's different types of data it can send. It can send text to data, it can send binary data, or it can send data that's not even information, but rather it's just, it's just, it's not like information that the server wants to tell the client. It's information about whether the server is still connected or not, or whether we, we should close the connection. So it, it's certain, you know, this is, point is it's called opcode, which means like the type is, it's a number between 0 and 16 that takes up four bits, representing the type of information we're going to send. It says here, the percent sign x just means like the number in hex, which essentially, if it's zero, that that means that that's in a case when a message is split into multiple parts, and then zero means that it's part of one of the multiple parts. But we're not going to worry about that. We're, 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 for testing, we're just going to do only sending text and maybe binary. But if it's the point is, if it's equal to one, which means if it's zero, 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 one, then that's an indication that it's text. And then anything from three to seven is also reserved for the future. And then if it's equal to exactly eight, which would be zero, one, zero, zero, which is eight, then that means that it closed the connection, which we, we might get into that. And also there's a concept of ping and pong, which sometimes in order for the client to determine if the server is still is still listening to it or vice versa, or, if the or the, for the server to, to determine if the client is still connected, they send a ping, like in the game of ping pong. They send a ping, and they wait for a pong in response. So if the number is equal to nine, then that means that it's a ping from the other side. And then it has to send back A, which is equal to 10. But, um, and then the rest of them are reserved, so empty. Basically, we only have to worry about sending this. When we're sending it from the server, basically, we're just going to send the number one. Then afterwards, this mask bit, this, this is part of the next byte, the first bit of the next byte. So it's either zero or one. It's called mask, which means that 
the actual data that we send, the text that we want to send, for example, in our case, the, the, the string shalom is called the payload, which is a fancy way of saying the actual information that we want to send. The other stuff is called the header information. All this is like the header information, which is pr a preliminary information before the thing we actually want to send. But the payload data is our actual thing that we want the client to see. In this case, the string shalom is our payload. So in other cases, not in our case, but in cases when we're reading from the client, sometimes the payload data is encoded in a certain way, which officially is to avoid people stealing the information. Essentially, it's encoded, it, it encrypted and encoded in a certain way, which is by a mask. So this is a zero or one telling us if it is masked or not, but it doesn't tell us what the password is. Essentially, the when it is masked, it's <coughs> excuse me, it's a 32-bit number, which is essentially a password which encrypts the data. But that's o that's only if we're reading the data. So this mask tells us if we should read this masking key, which is later. But when we're sending from the server, we can set this to zero, which means that we're just going to send the payload data. The next thing we have to worry about, which is a little complicated, but not too complicated, is the payload length, because the client needs to know exactly how big the information is. <coughs> Excuse me. So it sounds obvious, like, okay, if it's this, it's like how many characters it is. For example, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in this case. But the client, when it's reading our information, it doesn't automatically know when it when the information ends because maybe at the end maybe there's other things added to the end of it so when it's reading our this whole thing it needs to know exactly how much of it to read how many bits and bytes to read up and no how many bit bytes of this in, of the payload data to read until it's end until the end of it and then at the end maybe the other things maybe there's other things so therefore we need to know exactly how big it is so the next so th this is one byte this is eight bits and the next but bytes the first bit of that byte has the has the mask, which is a zero or one, indicating whether or not the payload data is encrypted. And then the next seven bits of that byte is a number between zero and one twenty six, because that's how that's essentially zero between zero and one twenty seven is is a, inclusive is essentially between zero and one twenty eight uninclusive is how many is is how big a number that seven bits can hold when you have. A seven ones in binary that is equal to 127 so therefore this number might determine the length of our payload if our payload is less than 126 because it uses the, it uses the number as 126 and 127 for other things but if it's less than 126 meaning if this length is 125 characters or less then the length itself is this meaning then the client knows that it's exactly how big this number is meaning this is a number this is a number seven bit number which is which, which represents the length but then if this if this seven if this number between 0 and 128 is equal to 126 then the client knows that the length is read from the next two bytes which is another 16 bit number and then if this is equal to 127 then the client knows to read the entire length from the next eight bits which is a lot a big number 64 sorry eight eight bytes which is a 64 bit number and afterwards we have the masking we have the payload data so i'm running out of battery but that's the summary hopefully next time we'll get to the actual coding itself